Coach, uh, I'll just go. I'm gonna I'm gonna take questions on the chat as as they come up. But Coach, why don't we just start you off with uh, how how have things been going the first few uh, practices for you guys? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, it's been um, it's been absolutely awesome. I mean, we've been having so much fun. It's you know it's hard to find a balance between we have so much we have to put in and we're not in shape and we got to do all this stuff to get game ready. But it's about balancing that with also um, you know just being mindful of how their bodies are feeling after not training at a high level, you know, for many months and, and trying to balance that has been, I think we're doing a good job. I mean, we're feeling good. We're certainly playing hard and, and very competitive. So things are good so far. Okay. Uh, first question, Brian Howell. Hey coach. It's good to hey. see you again. You, um, you know, I know that the football team, uh, I mean, they laid out their schedule and it starts with about a two hour window of COVID testing before practice starts. Um, what does your window look like? Are you guys doing that every single day? And kind of how long has that been taking to get through that? Well, our players, so in the event center, uh, we're able to test over here in the event center. So our players come in in small groups of, I think they're in groups of five or so. Um, and they come in in staggered segments in the mornings, you know, so they, I think, come in and, you know, test and then go, go get some breakfast. Some of them go to class, some go back to bed probably. Um, but we're doing it in the mornings. And, and so by the time they, they're ready to come and practice, our practice slot is in the afternoon. Um, they're completely ready to go. Like they just come in and get taped and, um, you know, and they're cleared for practice. So maybe not quite as long with only 15 or 16 people as opposed to the football doing 100. As a follow-up to that, I mean, how have your players responded to that? I mean, was there, obviously they know it has to be done, but um, yeah. have they sort of adjusted now? It's like, oh, this is just part of the daily routine. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, actually, I haven't heard a single peep about it, except the other day, Jalen came in and said, I said, how are you doing? She said, I'm tired. I said, what are you tired from? She said, oh, I got to get up at 730 every morning. Um, but Jalen, Jalen is not a morning person. And we all know that. And so, uh, but no, I, I'm kidding. But I think they're doing fine. Like they just know it is what it is. And they're also happy to play and want to play and know that this is the safest and best way that we can train effectively. Mm -hmm. Coach, I know that uh, you had um, you talked a little bit about trying to get everybody into shape. Um, I'm curious how thrown off your schedule was that you've had the last four or so years. I mean, here go, coming into the real practice when you guys can all get together, um, how difficult was it to kind of try to stay on track and get them into shape? I, obviously, they're college athletes, so so they're in somewhat kind of shape coming in, but to be in basketball shape, have you guys had to kind of ramp up the conditioning a little bit more? We have, yeah. You know, normally you have, we usually do summer school in July. So normally we have five weeks of training in the summer and then we do pure, a lot of conditioning for about six straight weeks in the fall. Um, this year we had none, no conditioning, you know, at all, maybe, maybe two or three sessions. Um, you know, and then those two weeks that the county had, um, you know, come out with the order where we could just have one person, uh, and then it became two people that those would have been two weeks that we would have really continued the conditioning. Um, but because we weren't able to do that, we've now sort of moved that into practice. Now we're not doing just a ton of pure running, um, but we are getting up and down some, and we are doing more running, you know, than we normally would do at this point in the year. But I, I feel good about where we are. We just have to continue to balance that. How much do we need and how sore are their bodies, you know, so that we can really maximize um, and in the end get where we need to be, which is by November 25th, be ready to play. And uh, following up to that, it, the risk of injury is always there when they're not totally in shape. How is everybody feeling here as you've kind of gotten through these first few days of everybody being together, adding adding the conditioning to it. I mean, I'm sure yeah. the typical, you know, I'm tired or a sprained yeah. ankle here and there. Yeah, no, luckily, luckily, no, no. Everybody knock on wood, wherever you are. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we actually feel pretty good. Our bodies feel pretty good. And um, and we're just, we're playing pretty physically. You know, I, I love our team. It's very competitive this year, uh, you know, amongst just the sort of depth of our roster. Plus, we just have a lot of very competitive uh, young ladies on our team and it's a priority for us this year so um yeah so we're, we're getting after it for sure but their bodies feel good well, as as, uh, outside of uh oh, i'm sorry sarah go ahead i was just uh following kind of up on that uh coming into um practice 
As far as different people having different places to uh, prepare during the summer, who kind of had the most challenging uh, situation that they ever overcome with work with their own workouts? Yeah, that's a great question. That those who stayed home um, for the most part had it the most that was most challenging for those that stayed home. You know, our athletic department put in protocols for our players that were here this summer that while they were very different than anything we had experienced, they were, they were fantastic. I mean, we had small windows where our players could get in the facility and not be around any other athletes um, with the exception of a couple of teammates. But those that were here this summer, I mean, they were lifting weights, you know, four or five days a week and they were able to get up shots. Even when coaches weren't allowed to be with them, they were able to get on a gun and get shots up, even if it was just one player at a basket. So you know, half our team was here. The other half had it pretty bad at home as far as, um, you know, being able, you know, Maya's grandmother, Maya Hollingshed, our senior, her grandmother bought her her very first basketball hoop this summer and they put it out on the street. And, um, you know, that was the, that was the, the only real access she had, you know, down in Houston. Sela Finau um, came back in June. So she was here during the summer, but when she was home in the Bay area, they didn't have any, there was nothing open. You know, so she was trying to run hills with her sister and her brother who were home, um, you know, but no, no courts anywhere that she could play. So she would do ball handling in her driveway and things like that. So I, I think everyone probably has a little bit of a sob story they could share, um, you know, but, but thankfully they're all back and, and doing well now. And as far as like the, uh, after the uh, first week, do you feel like you're, um, it's, despite the mask, it's uh, you're on, on pace as, as if any other season? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting because the basketball court right now is really the only place where we sort of feel normal. Um, you know, I mean, it doesn't really feel, other than the masks, it doesn't really feel any different than any other fall practice sessions. You know, we're, we're doing the same type of stuff and the same type of people and, um, yeah, so so that's that's really all I can say that really feels differently right now, thankfully. Ryan, go ahead. So Jr. Obviously, I know that you know one of your big things is them being healthy and uh, and not testing positive, all those things. Now, yeah. aside from that, basketball wise, we know your team uh, had some positives last year, but the record wasn't uh, where you wanted to be. What are you emphasizing in the early going of camp as far as getting better as a team? Yeah, the biggest thing that we're focusing on right now is competitiveness. You know, every, I would say in a two and a half hour practice, 95% of what we are physically doing, there is an element of competition to it. You know, even if it's free throws or a shooting drill, you know, there is a, a winner and a loser, you know, of every single drill that we're doing. And then at the end of the day, there is a team that won and a team that lost and um, for the day, as far as us uh, keeping track, you know, of who wins drills and things like that. Um, so I would say competition, you know, which kind of lines up with the group that we have right now is an extremely competitive group. It's also a very mature group. So we're able to compete in a way that, you know, is mindful of, of having a lot of new players, um, you know, but also mindful of the fact that we need to be able to, to sort of dig in and, and finish games. There were a handful of games, like you said, our record, you know, we would have preferred to have won both the Stanford games and won at Oregon State when it was a 12 point game and um, Arizona State you know, here by three and UCLA by three. And I mean, there were so many games that, <laughs> that were really close against top 10 teams. And I think we felt like if we had had that sort of competitive mindset for 40 minutes, as opposed to, you know, I don't know how many you could say, but for the entire 40 minutes, um, we would have won some of those ball games. And yeah, then, we've got uh, one more real quick one. Uh, Corey, if you have something, uh, I'm just going to view the last one for Coach Payne. Troy, can I do one more real quick? Okay. If that's okay. Uh, it's JR, fine. it's my understanding that Peanut's going to talk to us. So yeah, can you just kind of give it, can you just talk to us about Peanut and like um, her mindset as she's come in and what you've seen out of her? Yeah, I've seen, um, it's funny because we were actually talking about it in the office as coaches the other day, talking about Peanut as a freshman versus Peanut as a junior. Um, she, she's just extremely mature. She's taken on a very personal role of leadership and accountability for herself and for her teammates. Uh, she knows what what a great practice looks like. She knows what a great drill looks like and she's holding herself and her teammates to that standard of, of excellence as far as training and competition. So, um, I mean, she, she's everything you would want in a veteran. She's, she's uh, 
working hard and playing really well and has added some elements to her game um, in the post that are really kind of fun to watch. And um, so she's doing great. I did, I did want to ask because I had the chance to, and you, you mentioned the obstacles some of the players might have had when they were at home, but I had a chance to talk to Char when she was way back home, yeah. <laughs> way down there, um, and how she had to go into quarantine and all, you know, I, I mean, it's really stringent down there. I'm yeah. curious with your foreign players, with Char and with Frida, was there any difficulty getting them back here? Yeah. And some, uh -huh. some of the things that you, I, I'm curious about those stories because I, I know how um, it didn't seem like a big deal to Char to yeah. be down there and be in quarantine because that's kind of what they did. But I wondered about coming back to the good yeah. old USA. Yeah. So the hardest thing for both of those gals and, and, and uh, Zuza also went home. She went home for about a month, but then she came back and was here for several weeks before school started again. The hardest thing for the international students was their countries, you know, by the time they came back, Denmark and, and New Zealand were doing great. I mean, they had, they were basically back to normal in some sense. So then when they came here, it was, we were basically right in the heart of it, you know? So we were wearing masks. They hadn't necessarily needed to wear them there. Um, we still had a lot of things that were closed. They had not come from places where things were closed. So that was the hardest thing. Um, it was really uh, hard to get Frida back in the, or into the country for school. We really didn't know that that would happen. Um, her embassy in Copenhagen was closed for months on end. Um, and then when it finally opened, they had a huge construction project. So they didn't actually open when they were supposed to open. And um, she was very fortunate to get an early appointment, um, you know, and, and was able to get here in time. So we were really, really worried about that and thankful, of course, that she's here. Hey, Coach Payne, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll be joined here momentarily by uh, Pina Tutele. All right. Thanks, guys.